Welcome to Reptilian Diaries. I'm Frank. We do reptiles here. Female this time though. Look at this big girl. A big girl. Nice. She's a big, nice girl. Wow. Super sweet. Really nice animal. Another road cruised beauty. Tonight just does not stop. It's crazy. All right, so a closer look. Nephris, Levis, Pilbarensis. That is the Pilbara knobtail gecko, one of Australia's icons, one of the gecko world icons, one of the icons of all reptiles. You guys have seen these in National Geographic. You guys have seen them in children's books, in every gecko and lizard book you've ever seen. They're there. They're famous. They're dope little lizards. Killer tails, killer build, just an amazing lizard. And in this episode, we're going to talk about how to find them, where to find them, their natural history, how to keep them and breed them. Uh, yeah, we're going to cover them. So check it. genus, Nephris. You're looking at a handful of species. The Levis complex is three species. You got Nephris, Levis, Levis. It's got a large range throughout the center of Australia. You've got Nephris, Levis occidentalis. On the west coast of Australia, which is in western Australia, you've also got Nephris, Levis pilbarensis, which we're talking about in this episode. It's in the north, it's in the Pilbara, and they are beautiful. Probably the most beautiful of the uh, of the complex. They've got more coloration. They're just they're nice looking animals. So, what's cool about Nephris? Well, look at that tail. The tail's crazy. Basically, what the tail does is they'll use the tail to store excess fat. So these are terrestrial animals. They're living on the ground. They are nocturnal. They come out at night. They're eating insects, and in the daytime, they live in burrows to escape the heat. The nice little knob tail they have, they plug the burrow with that, keeps the predators out. They can lose their tail, they don't do it readily. Uh, another function of the tail is uh, you'll see them wiggle it or wave it kind of back and forth. And this is signaling, whether it be between males saying back up or whether it be, you know, talking to a girl, what's up, or whatever, uh, opposite sex. That's kind of how that works. Three subspecies in this in this complex are very difficult to tell apart if you don't have a trained eye. I'm not even going to go into how to tell them apart because a lot of it is chin scales, uh, different tubercle counts, scale counts, this, that, and the other thing. Best way to tell them apart, the especially if you're in Australia, is just knowing where you're at. If you're on the west coast of Australia, chances are you're finding Occidentalis. If you're up in the north in the Pilbara, you're finding Pilbarensis. If you're anywhere else, you're finding Levis Levis. Let's go back to Western Australia. Let's have a look at these guys in the wild up north in the Pilbara. After all day, we found a Parenti. We found a blackhead. We could not find a damn Pilbarensis. And then it happened. We nailed it. We finally Nailed it.
captive keeping. So there's kind of two schools of thought with keeping Neferis. Some guys keep them in racks. Other guys keep them in terraria. Both work. Both work completely fine. Generations of these things have been bred in racks and generations of these things have been bred in terrariums. The way that guys keep them in racks, it's a shoebox rack, sand in the bottom, a couple hides. You got a warm side in the back. You got a cool side in the front. So you've got your temperature gradient and you can keep multiple, multiple, multiple animals because you can fit rack systems in such a small space. Now, in terrariums, you can get a little bit more intricate. You can really set up a nice habitat, which is, you know, visually appealing to look at. It's not just staring at this wall of tubs. And I, I can appreciate both methods. In the rack system, in both systems actually, the key to keeping these animals is, number one, they are desert animals. If you haven't got that from the footage so far, these animals live in the desert, but they occupy a niche habitat that is fairly high in humidity. They burrow down into the root structures of plants or underneath boulders, and they get down where it's still humid. In captivity, you need to replicate that. And how you do that is with a fairly decent layer of substrate, usually about two inches. You generally, you use sand or you can use a sand soil mixture. Sand is probably the best. So you can either use two hides, one on the warm side, one on the cool side, or you can use one kind of larger hide. And what you want to do is underneath that hide, you want to wet the substrate probably two to three times a week. That way, the sand underneath the hide is damp, but the rest of the cage is dry. And what you'll see is the animals will generally burrow underneath that, the hide into that humid stuff and stay there in the daytime. And then at night, if you open up the cage or the drawer or whatever, you'll see them. They'll be out hunting and cruising around. And that is the way to replicate a perfect little microhabitat for them. It'll keep them from having shedding problems. It'll keep them eating and defecating well, and it'll keep them in good shape. And you can do that in both styles of keeping. You can do it in the, in the rack system, and you can do it in the terrarium. The terrarium, you could just make a more intricate, like little clay hide box with rocks and stuff on it. Just make sure it stays damp underneath there. Everybody's cool. The other thing about that is the females will lay their eggs there. These eggs are soft shelled. If they lay them in a dry spot, it's done, you're not gonna get them. They're gonna shrivel up and, and be finished. In captivity, these guys are gonna eat just about anything. Uh, roaches are great, crickets are great. Sparingly, you can feed wax worms, super worms, mealworms, stuff like that. They're generally not picky. I do have some animals that are picky. Babies can sometimes be a little bit tricky. You gotta tease feed them with tongs or break the back legs of the crickets off, but it is what it is. Uh, you know, sometimes cool animals like this need a little bit of extra help and they're worth it. So put in that extra bit of time, you'll raise healthy animals. So how do we breed them? Generally, you want to keep these guys separate. They don't like being together. Males and females don't like being together. Females and females don't like being together. And males and males definitely don't like being together. So you keep them separate. You introduce the males every 10 days, leave them in overnight and then separate them again. Usually about a week or two, you'll start to notice that the female's got two kind of white spots kind of situated along each side of her of her belly. And that generally means that she's ovulating and that she will start to produce eggs. What is it? Probably three, four weeks later, she's going to lay those eggs. She's going to lay them underneath that damp hide box that you created. You're going to then take those eggs. You're going to put them into a deli cup or some sort of a container. You can use these new sim containers. I've used those with some success. Or you can use just a deli cup with perlite one-to-one -one ratio perlite to water by weight deli cup does not need holes put the eggs in there put the lid on the deli cup you can open it every once in a while don't open it every single day because you're going to be messing up the humidity and uh, you don't need to do that 60 days 70 days 80 days they're going to hatch you're going to have perfect beautiful little baby knobtails they're not that difficult to raise sometimes they can be a little funny with eating if they are you want to take crickets break the back legs off so they move a lot slower <laughs> That is Nephris levis pilbarensis in a nutshell. You can use that information for any of the Nephris levis species, uh, subspecies. You can actually use that, you can use that loosely for any of the Nephris species. Some of the rough skinned species like Amiae, Asper, Wheeleri, and Cinctus and stuff like that are a little bit different. 
But in a nutshell, that, that's going to that's gonna help you get started. So hope you enjoyed it. Stick around, guys. Thank you so much for watching.